Minak, she says uh, one of the users' OneDrive is not syncing. I think we've all experienced that, that sync failure in life and OneDrive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Some more than has, others. Some more than others. <laughs> that's right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> not talking about anybody specifically, but yeah, yeah yep. I can see that. Yep. Uh, the user has uninstalled and reinstalled OneDrive. After that OneDrive started syncing, everything is working fine. But after a few hours, it again starts saying it is syncing. Uh, it, it, it is it's syncing. It's not syncing. We should, you know, what should we do to get it fixed? Right. So I, I can give it a perfect example of this is that uh, setting up a new computer for a user and this user still had their existing computer. And what was happening was is that I set up the new computer, started to sync to OneDrive, uh, obviously during the whole office setup, you know, scenario, entering their account information, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and that started syncing and it, and it was going through the syncing process. And uh, during that process, uh, the computer lost power. OK, so what it was is that the, the actual office that I was in uh, had a power outage and this was a desktop computer. It wasn't a laptop, didn't have a battery. Um, so that sync got cut off and we all know that sometimes with OneDrive, uh, instantly that one uh, OneDrive cache gets corrupt. You know, that, that it's got to go in and figure out, you know, go when you start back up, what was sync, what wasn't sync, you know, look at all of its metadata, whatever it does. Uh, but at the same time, this user was still on her computer in her office um, and she was changing those OneDrive files. OK, so OneDrive up in the cloud is is OK, this is coming online and it's not synced and there's something wrong with it. And I still have these changes I have to deal with. And it's only going to one location up in the cloud, <laughs> you know, and these have to sync together. So I've actually seen it in that situation. I just let it sit. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to let this thing go. And I asked her, I said, can you just not do anything with OneDrive for a while? And she's like, oh, I'll take the rest of the day off. OK, awesome. Um, but literally a couple hours later, all was good. But just let it do its thing. <laughs> Sometimes you have to let the pans, the dishes soak for a bit. Yeah. yeah. To loosen things up. Yeah. Yeah, the syncing files thing is a common problem, I think, across a lot of people. Like, I think they, they deal with that a lot. Um, did, they, did they, and Sharon, maybe you know this, did they take the option in SharePoint to uh, sync OneDrive out because of this issue? I mean, there was there used to be an option where you could create a uh, in in SharePoint. You could look at it and explore. They took that option out. Remember, you could open the you Windows. Yeah, Go you can't open it in Windows Explorer, but you can sync the at the library level if you still want to. It just changed. It goes through a different way that it does it, but right. you can't view it in the File Explorer view anymore directly. Um, but I will say that one of the big problems I run across with my clients when they're syncing um, is a lot of times people are on different machines doing different things and I absolutely tell them just give it some time and let it happen. But also the the credentialing tends to be a, a, a big issue. So a lot of times what will happen is they'll log in, they'll sync everything and then like something will happen where either they, they're logged out for some reason or it'll fall asleep or they'll be on a different computer and log in on a different computer and so the sync can get out of whack um and so i think a lot of that is really just understanding which credentials are logged into the computer making sure you're using the right ones making sure that your you know your sync job is is on and going and i'll show people in the panel like where they can check their their onedrive syncs um, and if worse comes to worse, there's always a pause option where you can basically pause the syncing, clean up your files, and then go restart the sync and it'll pick it back up. Um, but we we spend an inordinate amount of time supporting our clients in syncing. And so my recommendation is to not sync unless you need to sync and only sync the things you need to sync when you need to sync them. And when you're done, stop syncing. <laughs> So you're saying oh. say, you're saying actually leave them up in the cloud. Don't check that box saying always have them available offline. I have very much been encouraging my clients across the board to really not sync unless they so, have to. 
<laughs> I, I want to throw one caveat into that. I apologize if somebody else wants to comment, but let me throw one caveat into that. Is I just had an experience on my own computer with my backup to the cloud. Um, I use iDrive to back up to the cloud, and iDrive fails on OneDrive. Back, it'll back up OneDrive, but it fails if you have the check mark uh, in there saying only, only, uh, or only download the files I I, I use or something like that. Uh, so it, you know, it turns that little cloud into a green. So it, it brings it down locally, is what I'm saying. Um, there's actually a checkbox that says, uh, you know, don't don't copy, don't use uh, files until I need them or whatever. I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and iDrive will fail on that because it it wants that file to be local. So there are some cloud backups, <laughs> if you do this on a personal level, that still need that file to be local on your hard drive and not up in OneDrive. You know, the, the the issue that I run into around this is that it's because I don't know about all of you, but like I have so many different logins, so many environments. I have multiple one drives and I think and the first thing I do now. So it's 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 not an annoyance anymore, but I'm just aware of it is, you know, what am I logged in? What are the permissions? That's like the most fundamental thing, you know, that that impacts that experience for me. I run into the problem, just ran into the problem between business and personal. You know, it's like you need to know what you're installing because when you build up a new machine, you go out to office.com or whatever, you log in, you do an install office, you know, are you in a personal account or are you in a business account? Because it shows up in OneDrive as two different things and you have two different options, you know, with business versus personal. Um, and it can get, get confusing for people. What a great opportunity to just really encourage people to use Teams and keep themselves <laughs> organized in the right place and yeah. go out to the cloud to do it and maybe not try to do all this back end stuff the way we used to. I mean, everybody's got internet 90% of the time anymore. There's not as many good excuses as we used to have. It's very true, but the, and we were talking about giving it time and I, I agree with that as an approach, but people may not understand as they're they're using their computer on OneDrive and to know that activity and latency are usually the culprits to the syncing issues. And I, I know I've experienced that in the workplace and I've experienced it at home where they say OneDrive sucks or there's a problem with OneDrive. And it's not really, it's just it's the first time you go to OneDrive and the whole organization decides to sync through their their DSL based internet connection. I mean, everything's going to to lag out. Or if someone is, you know, heavy activity in a file and they're doing the business of their organization out of a OneDrive file instead of a team site, you know, it's those types of things start to 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 influence performance. Or they have their, all their music files. You know? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Gigs of music files they have to sync. Yeah. Yep. That's the point for me that I don't even bother syncing that stuff. <clears throat> In my case, I want that stuff to stay on the cloud and only be available when I request it. I mean, if nothing else, for the fact that it runs me the heck out of drive space. Yeah, yeah, this is true. This is very true. And I did find anybody use personal vault. Without I, know what it I haven't yet. No. Okay. Yep. Did yeah. you know what you know how personal vault works? No, I, I found this. I just I used it and I never really understood it. And I had a problem with it this week, uh, this past week, and I, I looked it up. It's actually a, a VHDX file. It actually creates a virtual hard drive. Oh, and okay. this virtual virtual hard drive is BitLocker encrypted. Right. So when you actually click on personal vault, it brings up that sign in. Mm -hmm. When you do that sign in, it's actually uh, un uh, it's uh, allowing you access to that BHD and it's unencrypting the, with the BitLocker key that's stored up in Microsoft's cloud. So the key for that, your personal vault isn't, you can't, your, your key, okay, you don't have that. Microsoft has it, okay? Mm -hmm. And the only way you can get it is you can go out to the web-based version of OneDrive and there's an option, a very, very nicely hidden option um you know that you can download your recovery key for your personal vault it's not very it's not explained very well or you know kind of put out there but 
I, I was really kind of intrigued by that. I was intrigued by that. It's actually a virtual hard drive on your yeah. hard drive. It's not in the cloud. So if something happens to your hard drive and happens to that that drive, it's gone. And good reason not even, to use it. Yeah. Yeah. So is this is this OneDrive personal or OneDrive for business? The personal vault is part of personal. Is, hmm. is yeah. Okay. Don't make sense when you say it like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. 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 But I see, we're thought, learning on the call too. Uh, yeah. 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 But yeah, it was, I found it incredibly interesting because I'm like, really? I thought it was just like a, you know, uh, like a, a lock, uh, like a credential lock, you know, on a folder or something like that. But it's an actual virtual hard drive. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. And it's cool that we can understand the mechanics of it instead yeah. of it just being a black box, which yeah. Yeah, it is. That's good to know. That's also uh, that that's good to know so that uh, not that any businesses were thinking, hey, we're since it's a part of the personal version of, of OneDrive that they weren't going out and, you know, thinking, hey, this is part of our solution and we need to oh, no. surround it. It's very much like me as an individual, like I because I used it for that intended purposes uh, purpose. I said, you know, I've got sensitive information that I want to. Have yeah, this. we know about your sensitive information, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> well, you would, Mike. Nothing that the authorities <laughs> want to see. No, of course not. Awesome. Hey, we got a, a twofer there with uh, two topics and one video.